Unlike DMC Devil May Cry, Hellblade isn't all about the combat. Combat is important to Hellblade, but at its heart, Hellblade is about the journey and the struggle of Senua on a mythical adventure. In the famous book Don Quixote, the hero sees the world interpreted through madness, seeing giants instead of windmills. And in a similar way, when you play the game, you experience the world through Senua's mind's eye. Senua knows that there is no going back to how things were. We like to think that we experience the world um, almost like a high definition photograph, that, as it really is. But actually, a lot of the time, what we're doing is using what we already know to shape and govern what we perceive. You know, if we recognize that principle of how the brain functions, it may be that we can begin to understand what happens in the context of psychosis, because psychosis can't really easily be understood as just some malfunction of the mind. It's actually a very creative process where somebody constructs a world. She's finally arrived in the land of mist and fog. The place the Northmen call Hell. In Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, I play a character called Senua, who's a Celtic warrior that goes on a vision quest into the Viking heartland. It's a journey of suffering which can be quite dark and sometimes brutal. Everything that Senua sees is shaped by visions from her own past, but also Viking mythology. comes from a land older than mankind. At the start of the project, we researched as much as we could Viking mythology, art and culture, but the more we looked into it, the deeper we went, the more I started to feel like we were out of our depth. So we reached out to Dr. Elizabeth Ashman Rowe, a leading scholar in the department of Anglo-Saxon, Norse and Celtic from the University of Cambridge. We showed the game to Dr. Elizabeth Ashman Rowe and she gave us a lot of very detailed feedback on Norse art, culture and myth. And we realised we could go a lot deeper on the Norse legend. She agreed to come on board as consultant and presented a trove of reference material to the team. I was talking about idols. We don't have a lot of them left. We hear many descriptions of, of wooden men um, or sacrifices on poles. The more we learned from Elizabeth, the more we wanted to share these myths with you. So we created lore stones and scriptures that relate to the Norse legend for you to find throughout Senua's journey. A secret path along the cliffs will take you to Gjallarbrú, the bridge that separates the living from the dead. The roots of the Tree of Death will take you to new lands where you will face the trials. Look around and you will see them. The drowned, the sick. Here they lie, rocking in the fields and rivers of hell. I've often been struck by the sense that I get talking to people with psychosis that they do feel themselves on a quest. I mean, it may be a, a figurative one. And in some cases, people actually experience a genuine physical quest. They're looking for someone or something or, or, or some answer. And with the feeling that if they can only achieve that, then there will be a release or a resolution to all of the things that are plaguing them. And she will fulfill her vow. We've covered in previous diaries how we've worked with experts, uh, organizations, and people with lived experience to simulate voice hearing and visions. But another lesser known aspect of psychosis is the ability to see patterns and associations and find meaning in them. One individual we spoke to told us in vivid terms how this felt for him, where every day felt like a puzzle, the clues of which were found in symbols, sounds, colours and visions in the world all around him. I and my colleagues at Cambridge University have been doing a lot of work uh, exploring um, how people can use their prior expectations to increase their sensitivity to uh, stimuli in their environment. And one of the very striking things that we found recently is that people with psychosis or, or prone to experiencing psychotic symptoms may actually be remarkably good at that. Maybe that under some circumstances they're actually capable of using their prior knowledge to um, really enhance the way in which they see patterns and put things together. The idea of illusion shifts in perception is common in both psychosis and Norse mythology. So these ideas form the backbone of the puzzle experiences in the game. 
But it's not just a gameplay mechanic, some of it is more experiential. Perhaps the wind is connected to your movement, or just paying attention to something changes the way it sounds. A good example of where perception changes gameplay is a section of the game where Senua loses her sight and must rely on sound and the barest of vision to navigate the world. One of the service users we worked with, um, she told us about her experience with Catatonia where she felt completely cut off from the world. Um, so we put a section in the game where Senua can barely see or hear anything and as a player you have to try and find a way out of it. When I did the body mocap for that section, I tried to perform everything with my eyes shut so that I can get a sense of fear and anxiety, and hopefully you will feel this when you play the section. We've now captured hundreds of animations to make Cinewa believable in both gameplay and cutscenes. The decision to create a low-cost mocap space in the studio has really paid off, as otherwise the costs would have been prohibitive. Given the complexities of interwining mythology, backstory, art and gameplay, it took us longer than we expected to get to this point. But now all of the story scenes have been captured, all of the VO recorded and the gameplay is fully playable from start to finish. We now run dailies where representatives from art, story, sound, design and gameplay are all present and we spend an hour every day reviewing a section of the game and that very day we implement everything that we can think of to make it a polished experience. And this is a process we're going to rinse and repeat every single day until we finish the whole experience. This just sounds too scared. The breathing is good, it really gives you a sense. And the breathing is going to be all the time, even when she's not scared. Yeah. Okay, cool. We've just completed our alpha milestone for Hellblade Center of Sacrifice. And that means that for the first time, you can now play the Hellblade experience from the beginning right through to the end. This however doesn't mean that the game is finished, there's still a huge amount of work to be done, but all of the levels, gameplay and story are now in place. But it does mean that we can now focus on what really matters, and that's the player experience. We look forward to bringing you another update soon.